Hi, we're going to be speaking about nozzle clogs, uh, hot end jams, and maintaining your hot ends, your nozzles, with some basic techniques and tools. We'll be talking about them on Bowden drives where your extruder is not attached to the hot end. We'll be talking about them on direct drives such as the bamboo. And I'll also show you if you have to take the nozzle down onto the workbench, how we are going to maintain and clean it from there. So let's get started on a simple Ender 3, which is just a Bowden drive. The extruder is separate from this. And one of the first things we always want to try before anything else is using a nozzle needle. So first, if you do have a jam, the easiest thing to try that sometimes alleviates the problem is using a small nozzle needle that comes in our nozzle maintenance kit, 0.4 needle for the 0.4 nozzles or larger. You want to make sure to heat up your hot end to over your previous print temperature so that we're sure it's melting anything that might be in there. And then you go at the nozzle from below. Okay, so when the nozzle's heated, you insert the nozzle needle and you can go up and down like that. And usually if there was a clog right in the nozzle, you'll, you'll be pulling out some filament with it. You'll clean off the end of the needle and then you could hit extrude. If it extrudes normally, you've just taken care of the problem and you could stop from there. But let's look at the situation where maybe you have the clog somewhere else. So we're going to have to try with it on the machine. I need to take the Bowden tube out of here. So if I can, I retract my filament. But if my filament's jammed, I might not be able to do that. I'm going to try right now. If the filament is jammed, we're just going to take out the Bowden tube. OK, I can get the filament out, which is good. And then we're going to use the pneumatic depressor to go ahead and push down and pull out there we go, the Bowden tube. Once the Bowden tube is out, you want to make sure that that's clean. This obviously is one of the roots of our jam. This Bowden tube is made out of PTFE, which basically starts to melt at 230. And a lot of times we're printing at 245, 250. So eventually PTFE actually is going to degrade on you. It's going to get full of molten plastic filament, and it's going to also lose its own structure. So you're going to want to snip that with a, a tube snipper. Um, make sure it's nice and flat and clean. And that will do after we're ready to put it back together. For right now, I'm going to tuck it away. Now you could either take off the coupler or we could work directly in there. So once again, the nozzle is heated. I've already passed the nozzle needle in there. So I'm going to start with my 3.8 nozzle cleaning tool. This is the size of the Bowden tube. And what this will do is it will get all of the material squished down that might have been in the opening where the Bowden tube goes down to up until the collar of the nozzle. And we're going to clean after that. So I'll just push that straight down. You don't want to hold it too long because you don't want the plastic to keep it stuck. And there is a little crevice here and that's to trap some material. You can see already it's gotten some material out at the very bottom, which is the place where material tends to pull. You want to have a razor blade to clean these off afterwards, but that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to use my 1.7 nozzle. This is the size of the filament, so the inside of your nozzle. I'm going to go all the way down into the hot end. And you can see from underneath, let me raise this up a little bit. You can see from underneath some material just let out and it just dropped. Oh, I forgot to mention, if you're working over your bed, it's always a good idea to have a mini slap right underneath there to catch any drips, as well as any uh, screws or other elements you might be taking off of there. So we've passed everything through, both from the top and from the bottom. That hot end should be clean. One more thing that we can do is we can flush it out with some cleaning filament. So you can take your filament right here. It has a very wide temperature range. You especially need this if you're switching between very high temp filaments to low temp filaments because when you have little bits of the high temp filament still in there and you switch to a lower setting, they're not going to be able to melt to get down to the bottom. And they're just going to collect there and start to create problems. And the opposite, if you're printing high temp materials and you have some low temp material inside, you're going to be carbonizing those. So one way to get rid of it is to push down the cleaning filament all the way down until it starts coming out. And what this will do is it will flush the nozzle. You can see it's coming up pretty clean. That's wonderful. And I can pull this out at any time. And we are ready to reassemble and go back to printing. Once again, though, I do want to trim this end off before we reinsert that. Now, 
Now we have a nice clean cut tube and we are ready to reinsert it into the coupler all the way down. Make sure it goes down as far as you can. And you should be inserting a retaining clip in there so the coupler never goes up and down as you have retractions. And now you could feed your filament back into the hot end and confirm. Here, I'll raise it up when I look at below. Um, confirm that the actual filament is coming out. So we still have the cleaning filament coming out. It's doing its job. It's bringing some of the dirt with it. And now we start to get our PLA coming out. So we did a wonderful job cleaning that hot end. Um, and we're good to go. But before we end, I'd like to say what happens if we didn't get the clog. We're probably going to have to take the hot end off of here to operate on it on the bench. And the only thing you need to know before you do that is you're going to need to take off the nozzle while the um, hot end is still hot. You have to at least unscrew it a little bit. So you want to be careful not to hit any of the wires, but you're going to want to take off the sock, possibly with a pliers. And you're going to want to hold the heating block, being careful not to touch the wires. I'm looking where the wires are. They're coming out this side. If you touch the wires, you're going to short the block and probably short your whole main board. Uh, so you want to hold, hold the block while you go in there with a, a nozzle wrench. So we're going to check which size wrench we need. This one is the six millimeter, which I believe is the right one for this. And it is. So we are going to hold the nozzle block while we twist, untwist the nozzle. Okay, while holding the heater block, I'm going to untwist the nozzle. There we go. Now it is finger tight. And at any point I could stop, I could either completely untwist it and let it drop onto the mini slap, or I could cool down the machine. There it is. Let me go ahead and cool down the machine temperature. Nozzle. Zero. Okay. And this is handy also if we wanted to just clean the nozzle separately. And we'll show you how to clean every element when it's off the machine. So in the case of a clog on a bamboo, the first thing we want to do as always is heat the nozzle up beyond the print temperature and try with the nozzle needle to clear it from below. And if that doesn't work, we're going to try first to operate on the hot end while it's still on the machine. And if that doesn't work, we'll show you how to take it off and operate on the table. If you try with your nozzle needle and you didn't clear the clog, we're going to have to work on the hot end. And with uh, a direct drive, you could start somewhat f on the machine if you could separate your heater element from the direct drive gears. Let me show you what I mean. If we were to take, let me take off the cover of the bamboo, this applies to a lot of direct drives. You've got your extruder right here, and the extruder won't let our 3.8 tool pass between it. Won't let any of the nozzle cleaning tools pass between it. So if we are able to take the heater block off the machine, but leave it attached so it's heating, then we could try a, a maintenance on the hot end while it's still heated up. So first of all, I'm going to pull out the PTFE tube. Okay, the filament's still jammed in there. Let me try to cut it. I was able to get it out, but there's definitely filament in here that's clogging up. So I'm going to grab a wrench. As I said, this is bamboo, but you're going to find this applies to many other machines. But I'm sure many of you out there have got a bamboo. I'm going to put a mini slap underneath here so the screws have a place to sit. Okay, now remember that the machine is hot, so we are going to try to grab the hot end uh, without touching the electronics and pull it down and hold it so that we can get to it with our cleaning tools. So I'm going to go ahead and grab, I don't want to touch the I'll do it lightly from the hot end. There we go. And now I can kind of get to the heater block side. Let me see if I can get to it from here without burning my, there we go. So I'm gonna take my 1.75 tool. I don't know if you guys could see that from the camera point of view. While it's hot and just push it down there while I'm holding this. You gotta be careful not to pull out these connections. If you'd short the machine, you could break the connection point. But I got that nozzle cleaner all the way down. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you could see it here. But that material just came out of there. So actually, it's pretty interesting because this is both black and blue. So we could see some material 
that shouldn't have been in the nozzle was still in there. This passage is clear. I can now cool down the machine, put it back together, and I'm back in progress. If I didn't clear the nozzle that way, we're going to want to shut down the machine, disconnect the hot end, and we're going to show you how to work on the bench next. So if you're going to work on your hot end on the bench, you're going to want to have taken it off the machine. And it's going to come with its wiring and everything else. So before actually hitting it with any heat by a blowtorch or a heat gun, we definitely first have to take off the sock. If you have an insulated sock, you want to unscrew and remove the heater cartridge, unscrew and uh, remove the thermistor. And when you're done, you're going to get down to either an element like this with a block on it, which is just the nozzle. Hopefully you've also removed the nozzle before heating the heat throw, the heater block, or in the case of like a bamboo, you'll have taken off the heater element and the thermistor, and you're down to only metal parts. So these we can work on pretty easily. The first thing we're going to do is we're either going to clamp it by holding it with pliers, or if you've got a little vise around, we could put in the vise. So I'm going to put that down so we could just have a free hand to work with. If we're doing it on the bench, it probably means that cleaning it on the machine didn't work. And if that's the case, we really need to heat up and clean out this as much as we can. So what I'm going to do is, I like a blowtorch. Uh, you can get a little hand torch, or you could have a strong heat gun. We're going to heat this up, and then we're going to push down with our 1.7 nozzle cleaning tool. I'll heat from this end. I'm going to heat the hot end a little bit. I don't want to overly react with it. Let's see if we get it to a point where it's actually red and melted. I'm pulling this out while it's still hot. It's pretty darn clean. You see the filament coming out the bottom? Now I can really feel it bottoming it out on the bottom of the nozzle, which it's meant to do. This has a conical, let me show you a tip on it, like the inside of the nozzle. You definitely want, don't want to push down very hard if you have a composite nozzle with an inset uh, piece like the ruby nozzle. Uh, we don't want to knock out the ruby. But on all standard metallic nozzles, this is just fine. I'm not going to hit it with a hammer. I'm just pushing down to squeeze out the material. And I could feel that it's clean now. I could let that cool off, reassemble it, and put it back on the machine, and I'm ready to go. The same goes for a hot end like these standard hot ends that we can take apart. We can either take it all apart. I would recommend taking off the nozzle to do it. Um, and that you need to do usually while it's on the machine and heat it and uh, heat it up. Let's see if I can get it off. Okay, luckily this one is not tight. So I'm going to unscrew the nozzle. Nozzle came out cleanly. The nozzle does have some material in it. But we could really see the jam was in the space between the heat throat and the nozzle, which is a typical error of whoever put this together originally. So I'm going to try to pull this filament out to give me some room to play with. And same thing, we're going to try to push this back out. So I'm going to get that hot without getting it red hot. I'm going to push until I feel this thing clear. There we go. And it's off. Let me get a paper towel so I don't burn myself. There we go. Nice and clean. So, completely cleaned. The first thing we want to do is put the nozzle onto the heater block from below. Make sure you got the, the nozzle block, the heater block, in the right orientation. So we're going to want to put that on from below. Tighten it all the way in, and then back it out almost a full turn. So you'll have some extra space in between the nozzle and the heater block. The reason we need this is because when we have it on the machine and it's completely heated up, up, we want to cinch that down. Metals expand when they heat and we don't want that making it looser. We actually want to tighten it when it's hot. That's going to be our final step. So the first thing we do is we tighten it all the way then back off a little bit. Now with the nozzle in position we put the heat throat in and we go down as far as we can until it hits into that nozzle and absolutely won't go any further. Okay, so once that's reassembled, we can be sure that neither of these can tighten any further and there is that gap between the nozzle and the heater block. Then we proceed to install our heater cartridge, our thermistor, 
when that whole thing is rebuilt and wired up, now you're ready to put it on your machine, heat it up to temperature, 230, 240 degrees, and take your nozzle wrench and give it the last turn to seal that nozzle against the heater block and the heat throat as tight as you can. That will prevent there from ever being a gap in accumulating material and causing clogs and extruder clicking. Thank you.